What's up, YouTube? It's Wisconsin Guy. Uh, I haven't done a video in about two months because uh, who wanted to listen to things about last format? And uh, since this format began, I had prior obligations to school, so I haven't been able to do any videos. But uh, I got a deck here for you today. It's uh, Fader Monarchs. Got three Faders and a Sangan. Three Caius and two Ryza. There's a one Light and Darkness, a Sorcerer, and a Cyber Dragon. Three Valleys and an Angel. You can play two of these if you want. Three Alchemists, which are the main target for that, actually. You don't want to get Valley that much. And two Dakochis to fuel the Sorcerer. Uh, for Traps, you have two Deep Prisons, uh, two Bottomless, Mirror Force, and Torn to finish out the Anti Monster Suite. Uh, Starlight Road, uh, Dust Tornado, Solemn, and Call. Uh, if you want, you can cut this card, Call the Haunted. It's not that great in this deck, because if you look at it, the only thing going to be bringing back is uh, Monarchs once in a while, if they don't fall to their bottomlesses or get removed by other means. Your own valleys. <coughs> uh, we have the cards that work perfectly with the Monarchs in the valleys. Mind and Brain, uh, two controllers, and two soul exchanges. And a lot of people don't know, but you can soul exchange and can use control or attribute their monster to take another one of their monsters. So things get kind of fun with this deck. And uh, one allure, obviously. One goat, one typhoon, and one heavy storm. To finish out the staples. Not the scapegoat's a staple. Uh, the basic premise of this deck is drawing, obviously. You sit there with valleys, and you pass a lot. And you just draw and draw. You remove faders, you remove their monsters with the mind and the brain, and then you loop faders and start dropping monarchs after you've already, well, drawn a bunch of cards first off and depleted what monsters they have. So after you work on their monsters by removing them or killing them, you start dropping monarchs and hitting their back rows or whatever else they may have on the field and start to simplify the game state more. Uh, this deck doesn't really synchro that much. You can play Plague. I actually like Plague in this deck a lot, but we have decided not to put it in this deck at the moment because it's not absolutely needed. If you do play Plague, though, it's it's good because it optimizes what you can do with the floaters. If you don't have Monarchs, then you'll obviously you might have Plague to go into to sync with the Coaches or sync with the Monarchs after you've already attributed a floater for them, making themselves a floater, etc. Uh, another two interest cards I'd like to look at are the Trap cards, which is these guys. Uh, this card is really good this format. And in a lot of our decks, and the other decks that I'll profile in a day or two, because I'm going to use it at tournament tomorrow, uh, we run two of these, and even in like things like Gladiator Beast, we run these because, well, let's look at the big decks, the format that we know so far. We have Gladiator Beast, Black Wings, and Flamevale Cat. Flamevale Cat and Gladiator Beast both run Cold Wave, and they get plussed off by these, by Dust Tornado at least. And uh, Black Wings is plays Whirlwinds and Icarus Tax, so that's, it allows you to play around their end phase things or s prevent them from uh, getting a bunch of Whirlwind activations off. And uh, Starlight Road. Well, it's not as good this format as it was last format. Uh, stopping a Judgment Dragon or Celestia or Storm is pretty good. I mean, sometimes even when it's dead, you can use your own Storm to activate its effect. Your own Storm or your Mirror Force, Torrent, etc. To bring, just to bring out the Stardust to get over something. Because this deck gains so much advantage that sometimes you can you can do this and negative one yourself by Starlight Roading it in order to start getting through their monsters if you need to. If you have none of the other things to do, which is highly unlikely. Uh, another card we included one of those, or the, these two monsters. Cyber Dragon and Light and Darkness Dragon. Uh, this guy, as you can probably tell, I mean, you have three faders, so those are special summons, we have this cyber, and the five cards that can take their monsters. This card's incredibly easy to drop. The only downfall of Light and Darkness Dragon at the moment is that people are still running Lightsworn. 
if Lightsworn, this is why this card died in the first place. Lightsworn came out. So, if people stop running Lightsworn, this card and this deck get a lot better. Because you can start replacing Monarchs. You don't need Rises, absolutely. Kai's is you want because they're fodder to the Sorcerer. And they work. They fit well with the theme. But you don't absolutely need these. You could drop these for another Light and Darkness Dragon, if necessary. If, if Lightsworn phases out. But... Seeing as uh, Judgment Dragon is still around, that probably won't happen. But, this card's really good against Black Wings, Gladiator Beast, Flame Veil Cat. Uh, it forces them into at least negative warning themselves, and it allows you to get back any number of things. You can get back an Alchemist to cycle a Fader, you can get back a Valley and start drawing. If a Valley somehow dies, you can get back a Monarch and start beating over whatever they have. Once they've wasted the activations down on it, you can do a number of things. Um, cards that you might play that we do not play are Return from a Different Dimension. Card's kind of good. It allows you to bring back the valleys and, uh, start cycling things more when you're in the late game. It allows you to have a late game, other than just having a big hand. And, uh, another card that I like personally in this deck is DDR. Because it allows you to recycle things that get removed like potentially monarchs from valleys or bottomlesses sorcerer uh just having the card in the deck for an option to do something with one of your removed cards which is a lot of cards i think is personally is good um you don't really need a extra deck for this deck because it doesn't run tuners i have an extra deck but i'm not even going to waste my time showing it to you because it's Pointless. Uh, side deck cards. I just go through a short list of them. Some mirrors, a breaker, Thestalos is Mobius. These guys go in, well, this particularly goes in against Gladiator Beast. This goes in against Flame Cat and Slower Decks. Jiu Jitsu's, Gladiator Beast, Crow, all that random garbage like Light Swarm. Trag. That card's good. That could be in the main, but. Because you have big hand a lot, but you you generally don't want to be allowing them to hit you. You want to use your trap cards and this stuff to mitigate damage as much as possible. You definitely don't want to drop very far. Uh, no minute crossouts. This card is, at the very least, in my opinion, this format, a side deck staple. Uh, starting on... If your opponent starts and sets a Raikou and a bottomless or something, like any form of removal... A lot of decks, including this one, have a hard time coming back from that. A lot of decks have a hard time coming back from your opponent being able to gain tempo with Raikou. And, or, like, Spy in cat decks. And so this card is stellar at this format. Uh, one Mind Control. Let's use that for things like Black Wings or Lightsworn. And one Morphing Jar. But that's just because it's, like, my favorite card. <laughs> and it's good. It's good. It's actually good in this deck because you can you can blow your monsters, set morphing jar, and then use your traps, to, your magic and traps to stop their attacks, and then set a bunch and jar for a lot of pluses, which is always good. Everyone likes plus jars. And uh, that's Fader Monarchs. I'll probably be putting up a binder video and another deck video by Sunday night, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Welcome back.